Dear Chase Bank, you are dirty, filthy, and rotten. Stop using my money to fund fossil fuels, you son of a <laughs> Love you, Lise. I'm really kind of over funding these fossil fuel projects. Like, why am I signing a petition to protest this pipeline when my money is actually inadvertently funding this pipeline? So you need to tell me. After signing the Paris Agreement, 60 big banks have funded $3.8 trillion into fossil fuels as if the planet isn't already dying. Doesn't sit well with me, that's for sure. Hi Earthlings, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Elise. If you're new here, stick around. You might see something you like, tickles your fancy a little bit. You can also go ahead and subscribe, you know, it's completely free. All it does is notify you when I upload, if you're into that kind of thing. And if you like what I upload, go ahead and give it a like. You can follow me on Instagram. Okay, done with the self promo, cut it. This is about the planet and your money. It's real shit. So where to even begin? When I moved out and became like an adult completely on my own, I knew I needed a bank account. I just had one from back home, which honestly was fine, except that there were literally non-existent in New York City because it was a local branch. So I was like, all right, I need my own bank account. I went with Chase. Boo, I know, I didn't get it. I just needed a bank account that was gonna like let me open one and approve me, so. I went with them. Little did I know that they are the biggest funder of fossil fuels. They put $317 billion into fossil fuels in the past five years since the signing of the Paris Agreement, which we all know happened in 2016. It was a landmark kind of like agreement between all these countries to slash emissions, which we're still not doing. Hold your representatives accountable. But yeah, they've funded projects like the Dakota Access Pipeline. If you've known anything about that kind of fight with the lands and the waters and everything, them, they funded it. They are literally the backers behind those kinds of sorts of projects. Big banks and fossil fuels are really, really buddy-buddy up in the joint, up in here, this hizzle. <laughs> Ugh. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but they're they're tight. Okay, they're like hand in hand. They fund each other basically Anywho, um after I kind of like found out those sorts of things. I was like mm, I really don't want my money where chase can spend it to fuel fossil fuels Like I knew how important it was to vote with my dollar and be an ethical consumer and buy things that align with my ideals But I had no idea that ethical banking was really like a thing even. I didn't know that Chase was turning around and taking my savings and my checkings and investment or whatever and fucking fueling fossil fuels, like choking the planet even further. So, and after the Paris Climate Agreement, like why did they think that was a smart investment? Because renewables is gonna fuck them up real quick, hopefully, fingers crossed. We can dream, right? What I wanted to do is completely mess around with my financials and share it with you guys but let me say this is personal finance so i'm not telling you at all what to do where to move your money where to invest i'm just hopefully shedding light that there are ethical environmental social economic justice kind of alternatives that you can put your money towards without even really thinking about it because whether you realize it or not, those big banks like Citigroup, which is like Citibank, Bank of America, Chase Bank, those are the three biggest funders of fossil fuels in America. So if you can take your money and move it, that would be doing so much. And if you could get your friends to move it, your family to move it, and just have a mass exodus from these big banks because they're funding fossil fuels, maybe they'll wake up, smell the coffee, be like, hey, this isn't it anymore. We gotta stop because these people want a planet to live on. They wanna have children. They want their children to have a planet to live on. That's not the moon. I don't want to go to the fucking moon or Mars. Why are we trying to go to the Mars and the moon? And There's no trees there. I have firstly decided to move my checking over into something that was going to be more ethical, which luckily there is no shortage of financial checking accounts that you can open. I will leave a link down below of the article that I read through and kind of like, picked and pieced together where I wanted my checkings to go. I'll leave that down below because that really helped me. But I'm here to tell you that I went with Amalgamated Bank and it just really, really stood out to me because it checks every box for me, firstly. I'm not sponsored, by the way. Do you think someone with 150 subscribers is gonna be sponsored by any banking institution? Hell no, girl, I highly doubt it. So here we are, me talking about a bank that 
I really truly believe in. I have my money in it and I have my heart in it and it just aligns so nicely with what I'm looking for in a bank. Even it exceeds my expectations and for banking industry, like, I don't know, they've been in the game for a hundred years and I'm just surprised this isn't like a big thing and the green environmentalist kind of community to move your money around and like there are young people that don't realize what their money is funding so you know it's nice to like talk about it and I think it's something that's kind of been overlooked it's like if, if the money if the banks don't have your money how can they fund the fossil fuel projects so if we can move our money around as people as consumers we have a large number of constituents and only a few people that are at the very top work in the pyramid so if we can move it we can do, we can make some real change here. Amalgamated Bank, back to them. They are run off of 100% renewables. They run a net zero operation. They are prison free, tobacco free, weapons manufacturing free, and fossil fuel free. And like, that is amazing. I didn't even think about my bank funding war, essentially, or big tobacco, or private prisons. These are things that didn't even cross my mind until I was already banking with Amalgamated. I'm like, shit, where has my money been going this entire time? Some other things about Amalgamated, they've been in the business for 98 years, so basically 100, and they first opened with the intention of immigrants being able to have checking accounts and being able to cash their checks without like so many forms of ID or credit checks or whatever, whatever, and they just made it accessible and easy, which I think is the pinnacle of what Amalgamated is, is accessibility and ease and they just don't make it tricky to be banking and to be saving your money and they're not trying to price gouge you with like underbanked communities having to go out of their way and paying crazy opening fees or if low balance fees and stuff like that. They don't do that. Emerson? You need to say something you want to add another reason i decided to bank with amalgamated is because i could see my money growing granted it's not like a huge interest rate i'm not exactly sure what it is but it's better than 0 0.01 which is what chase bank was giving me so i'm earning a little bit more interest having a bigger savings account and like seeing that money kind of grow steadily and knowing it's not growing from who the fuck knows what. They're not being stingy with their interest rates. No ma'am, no they're not. They're actually like giving your girl some coin, which I really appreciate because I chose to bank with them. So shouldn't they reward me for making that choice? That's, that's how it should be, right? You would think, you would think. I've actually had a really good experience with them. I've been able to do everything I need to do online. They also have all point ATMs, which I'm actually literally not sure where they exist, but I'm sure they're out there and I have a branch in New York City that I can physically visit if I ever need to, but I don't think I'm gonna need to because everything is, like I said, online and set up, which in this day and age, mobile is the wave, you know? So with banking, it's really nice that I didn't have to go in physically and set everything up. I did everything 100% online. It did take about two weeks to start moving my money because not only do you have to open the account, and get approved then I had to transfer from Chase to Amalgamated and like have like approval transaction wait time and stuff like that yes it's not going to be an immediate change it will take you some paperwork to get through which if it's not your biggest thing all I can tell you is once it's done it's done for good you're never gonna have to worry about it again and you can be resting easy knowing that your money is in a good place and not choking the planet once I had my checkings and savings squared away with amalgamated I felt great I was like I'm on the right track now I just have to move the rest of my money around because I have been investing Investing, slowly but surely with acorns they put the rest of your dollar amount into a roundup fund and it just fuels your investments which has been great because my money has been growing without me looking but then once I caught on to what like Chase and all the other big banks were doing I was like well what is acorns doing they're a small business kind of thing like they're not small but they're not huge but then I was thinking, okay, let me look through their portfolios and see what's going on here. I didn't really see any climate options or any real options where I could put my money where I actually wanted to and anything that actually aligned with what I was looking for. So I sent them a customer support email or something and I was asking, I reached out, I said, hey, do you have any environmental portfolios or social justice portfolios that I can invest in because that's where I want my money? They responded, no, we have these. And they were like, cut and done I was like oh well, that's so so great um but I'm gonna have to leave you now because 
I don't want my money there and like there are fossil fuel investments basically in any standard portfolio that you're going to get so that's another point maybe you don't have to completely move everything around but just double check on what you're investing in because like I said I was investing for maybe a year and some change and like not really knowing where it was going once I grew that money I was like okay well I have like a good chunk of change to move like I don't want to keep this growing here and funding who the fuck knows? I decided to move it to an app called Betterment, which is also obviously an investing app that is made really easy for you. So they have social justice, environmental justice, climate justice, and I think one that combines the two. They have a decent range to choose from. You don't have to only be environmentally conscious. You can be socially conscious, which is just as important because we're all in this together. So let me log on. Ever since I got bangs, my face ID doesn't recognize me. I'm in the Betterment SRY climate portfolio. It's like what the name is. This portfolio is based on the Betterment portfolio strategy with increased weight in stocks of companies meeting certain social, environmental, and governance criteria. So that makes me rest easy knowing that the money I'm kind of pocketing away and trying to save over time isn't being made off the backs of people that are like struggling. I feel actually very lucky to have found Betterment because I feel like there's not a lot of climate options out there for investing in general. And I kind of think that's ridiculous because don't we all know renewables are the new next best thing? Don't we all know that we should be investing in our future? I personally think so. And if I can have enough spare money spare change to put towards investing and show like the market that that's what people are interested in i'm going to and i just don't understand why it's not a bigger trend bigger market trend even regardless if there's a lot of money to be had in it or not that's just what i support and i will support it with my dollar the only thing left for me to do is to find like a green credit card i've applied for two and i've been denied for two I guess I just didn't realize after being applied and approved for my Amazon Chase credit card, which literally fuck me, that's the worst kind of credit card I could possibly have. But of course they approved me. Of course they're like, gimme, give gimme, give we want your money. And I was like, okay, like that's totally cool. Like I'll have Amazon Prime. But now I have this credit card that I'm stuck with because it's my only credit card. I don't want to cancel it just in case of emergencies. But at the same time, I'm like, there's got to be something better. So I'm actually going to probably apply for the Amalgamated MasterCard or the REI MasterCard or like find a few other options. And we'll see just because I don't want to continue funding Amazon firstly and secondly Chase. Like the just why did I ever do that? I know why. It was a convenience kind of thing. It was a consumerist mindset. It was oh, this is the best deal for, you know, I buy things all the time on Amazon, which I try not to. I actually did get something for my camping trip, but I will admit I'm not perfect. I know I'm like trying to be like, move your money, but let me admit like my credit card history is not the best when it comes to the climate and the environment and social justice and workers' rights and unionizing and everything like that. Um, but I'm admitting it. I'm not trying to be super self-righteous. But at the same time, if you guys know of any credit cards, maybe you could have a better chance at like applying and getting approved. I will leave the link down below of an article I found that was kind of explaining and describing these credit cards and the banks that they're associated with. Not only look at the credit card, but the bank that's like funding it or basically that you're funding, you need to look at that too, um, which is a big point. Just looking at not only brands, but parent companies as a whole is something I think consumers could really leverage their place in the market if they started doing. I hopefully am gonna apply and get approved for like a greener credit card because this Amazon Chase thing is just like killing me. Every time I use it, I'm like, I, I don't want to. I really don't want to. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> so I'm just trying to like get out of that as quick as I can, but I don't want to cancel it until I have um, another credit card. But I have been spending less and hopefully the transition will be easier. I just want to emphasize no single person is going to be the one that completely breaks the big banks. But if we all band together and we collectively move our billions of dollars that we as American citizens have from these banks, we're definitely going to see a little bit of a change, you know? And it doesn't have to be to amalgamate it. It can be to your local credit union or your local banking branch or whatever it may be. 
just making sure that they are aligning with your ideals and aligning with the community that they're serving, which they should definitely be serving that community. The little nuances of banking that I just didn't even realize were there because it is an accessibility kind of thing at the end of the day. We can definitely do some damage if we all kind of like take a look at our checking and think, hmm. I'm really kind of over funding these fossil fuel projects like why am I signing a petition to protest this pipeline when my money is actually inadvertently funding this pipeline do you know what I mean so maybe we could take a step back just take a look at your finances see where they are if you're super young and you haven't gotten into banking yet this is the perfect opportunity for you to do a lot of research before you get that first job or before you start taking out loans or before you like go to college and like have your own bank account and don't make the same mistake i did because to be honest it's way easier from the jump to just set up your money and keep it in one spot one good spot versus like having this bad bank account and then opening a new one and then having to transfer everything over to the new one. Not only like your money, like where, how you get paid and everything, but also all the subscription services you have, all the monthly billings that you have, um, all the apartment bills that you have. I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> so just take a page out of my book, maybe do some research. Like I said, I will leave those links down below. I'll leave the sources down below. It's just insane to me that we've funded and I'm saying we because I've been a part of it. Almost four trillion dollars worth of fossil fuel projects since 2016, since the Paris Agreement. That's all I wanted to say today. Hopefully this helped you out. Maybe like you're in the market for opening a new bank account anyway or moving your money around and this is something that you can take with you and think, hey, that was kind of useful. If you're wanting to see more green content go ahead and subscribe that's mostly what i like to focus on um, on my instagram it's more sustainable fashion secondhand thrifting those kinds of things so you can follow me there here it is a bit more like lifestyle sustainability so like cooking personal care also fashion but also banking and like little things like that so if you're more into that go ahead subscribe like this video drop me a comment down below if you're thinking about moving your money where to or if you have any suggestions for anyone else would love to hear them. That's gonna be all for today's video. I've rambled enough, so I will talk to y'all in the next one. Bye. Bye. Ugh. <laughs>